Hey, I'm Chris Ralph, the professional prospector, and um, I'm here to do a video out about prospecting with a metal detector. Basically, we're going to go do some detecting, and I'm going to show you guys just some basic stuff. I'm going to look around with my STC 2300. We're going to try moving some rocks. We're going to go over some ground cover. We're going to uh, do some different things, and we're going to find some gold. That's what we're going to do. So anyway, come along with me and we're going to have a bunch of different segments here where we try some different things and uh, see how it goes in finding some gold. There, this is an old placer working. You can probably see the rocks behind me, the piles, the hand stack, and everything else where the old time miners worked. So we're going to be here and I found nuggets here in the past and I'm, I'm sure we'll find a couple more today. So hang along with me and uh, the next step the next segment we're going to move some rocks and see if any of the rocks uh, uh, covered up some nuggets that the old timers left behind okay so you should be able to see there's some rocks here right at the edge of this little drop off there's workings down below here and this is kind of the slope of a hill and the the stream kind of went through this way and the miners threw these rocks up out when they were working and I think that uh, some of these rocks uh, might be covering over maybe a little bit of gold. So what I'm going to do is move these rocks and then I'm going to have you back in just a minute to take a look and see if we can find some gold down underneath these rocks with the SDC. Well I, I did get a signal here in the rocks and I'm sure you'll be able to hear it. Now that's a, a signal that's going down and then up. You know, uh, generally speaking, smaller targets on the SDC will go up and then down. So wee oo like that, that's up down. And this one is a ooey, which generally means a larger target or perhaps something iron. So uh, the probability on this one is that it is iron trash, but there's no way to know. Um, not very many of the nuggets here have been of any size. Uh, in fact, I think the biggest one here that we've gotten, or me and other friends have gotten, has been around two penny weight. So uh, uh, I'm thinking it's trash, but there's not that much trash up here. So I'm in definite dig it all mode. So I will be digging this. See, ooh, hey. So anyway, it's a target, and it was in among the rocks and hidden in under a big rock. So we'll see whether it's trash or gold. Okay, well it's out of the hole. You can hear that. So I'm going to go ahead and dig it out. I think it's right here in the pile. Okay, that wasn't it. Okay, it's in the scoop. Let's see what it is. In my hand. Hmm. Still in my hand. Oh, I felt something heavy. Oh my goodness. That's gold. <laughs> it's a little bit bigger piece of gold. I'm guessing close to a penny weight. Excellent. So I got paid good wages for moving those rocks. It only took me a couple of minutes. Um, and I got a nice, nice piece of gold. It wasn't a very loud signal, and it shows you that even a not very large nugget can still give the down-up signal on the, the uh, SDC. Yeah, you can definitely hear that down-up. Wow. Excellent. Good gold. Yeah. We'll do some more detecting, and we'll find some more gold. Just hang on with me. 
All right, well, I, I dug in and around the rocks after I found that nice nugget and I didn't pick up any more targets, but that's not unusual. But it does show you why it pays to dig in and around rocks, especially in an area where you've found nuggets in that, that general area, so that general space. The old timers tossed the rock there and they buried and covered up a, uh, a nice nugget and uh, when I was through here before, you know, I put my detector over the top of that uh, boulder, but didn't detect anything. But it was a good sized rock, and once I moved it, then I could hear the target. And even then, the target wasn't super loud. But uh, once I dug down on it, once I got it out of the hole, yeah, then it was pretty loud, a pretty, pretty good down up target. So, anyway, it just shows that. Uh, that digging in among the rocks is a good thing. We're going to try some other techniques here that I'm going to show you. And uh, the next one is we're going to go in and around the ground cover. Uh, a lot of people just avoid the ground cover because it tends to make false signals and do other things. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll have some good luck with that too. But for now, the rocks experiment, uh, I've dug it out and didn't find anything more. So still, it was well worthwhile. Okay, here's an area of rocks and ground cover that a lot of people would shy away from. This kind of ground cover specifically has a tendency to catch your coil as you're swinging and, and get you tied all up in it. In fact, uh, it's not hard to even trip on it. It's uh, Some people call it like an ankle buster. Um, so anyway, this kind of stuff gets ignored and I'm going to go over this and see if I can't find something worthwhile. Uh, here in this area where there's ground cover over and rocks too. So we'll go over, have to go over the top of that stuff, but we'll go slowly and listen carefully for faint signals that might be lying underneath. Well, I went over this area of ground cover and I did get one really good sounding target. I'm going to let you listen to it. It's in the scoop here. That's what most of the gold here sounds like. So uh, I was pretty excited when I heard it, but I dug it up and it was it was in the duff, it was right on the surface, um, just underneath the pine needles uh, uh, on the surface of the, the dirt. And it turned out to be a little bit of bullet shrapnel. But that is what the gold sounds like. So kind of funny thing, um, the piece that sounded great was lead shrapnel and the piece that I thought mm, you know those down up signals there's not many nuggets like that up here well the down up signal turned out to be a nugget so you know the sounds can fool you that's why unless you really have super bad trash you really should dig it all and with a detector like this it really doesn't the SDC doesn't have any discrimination um, there's not an option of uh, of discriminating something out because it, it doesn't offer any discrimination. So uh, this this area, um, I chose the SDC 2300. You might ask, well, why did you choose the SDC 2300 for this this segment? Well, this area has some significant hot rocks and some bad ground and stuff. In fact, there's a few areas where it's rough even on the SDC, and so. Um, it's a tough area to run a VLF in. Not saying it's impossible. Uh, VLFs have been up here and found a little bit of gold, but uh, it's just a lot easier and uh, a, a lot uh, more fun to run uh, a pulse induction unit like the SDC 2300 because it's sensitive for small gold, and that's what we have up here is mostly small gold in this area, but it'll ignore those hot rocks and the ground mineralization pretty well and uh, just zing on targets. So again, a good sounding target, but a piece of lead shrapnel. So anyway, I'm going to keep digging. I think next segment we're going to move over to my dig hole, which was a patch, and I'm basically digging into the ground there and listening and looking for signals. Once I get below the surface, you know, digging down along the bedrock, there really is essentially no trash. If I get a signal, it's 98% chance it's going to be cold. So I'm going to go dig over there. I'm uh, not going to turn the camera on to watch you know, have you watch me dig. I think that would be kind of boring. So let me dig a while and see what I get, and when I get a good target, I'll pull you back in. 
Okay, I've been digging around in this hole for a while and I finally got a target in the hole. So let's listen to it. You can hear that nice high sound, the high, uh, low, and here. It's up in an area that looks like it's sitting on bedrock. And I've been digging around in this hole, you can see, and uh, looks like I've got another piece of gold. Let's find out. So I'm gonna just kinda dig it up here. And it was right in the first little bit. So let me see how it goes. Still in the spoon. In my hand. In the spoon. In the spoon. In the spoon. Oh, I see it. It's gold. Very good. Another little nugget. So like I say, digging around in, in uh, places where you've dug before, you know, this is actually a, a patch that I've dug quite a number of nuggets out of. And so I, I have a pretty good idea that when I dig into it and I get a good target, that uh, good odds that it's going to be gold. So another nugget, nice nugget. And uh, you've gotten to go along with me today and see me uh, move some rocks and get a nice nugget. And you've seen me um, go over the ground cover and find a great sounding bit of lead and then here uh, I'm digging in my hole and got a nice little nugget that uh, goes real good on the SDC. Uh, it's got a nice little shiny spot on it but it's natural. That's a natural crystal face. Anyway, a beautiful nugget and a great day. So thanks for tagging along with me. I'm going to dig a little bit more here, and if I get into some more gold, I'll pull you back. But otherwise, it's already been a great day. Two decent nuggets. I've, I've probably got a full penny weight total. So thanks for coming along. Well, I thought we were done. But as I've said in a number of my videos, nuggets often occur in groups, or patches as they call them. And I dug just a little bit further in the spot where I just got that nugget, and look. You can hear the faint target. I'm gonna have to dig for that one. That's in there a little bit. But the fact that we can hear it, that's a good sign and, and it's a good repeatable signal. So this is what I mean by faint signals. You hear this. You can definitely hear that. It's not real loud, but it's a very definite repeatable signal. And as I move the coil in the same direction, it gives the signal just the same at the same spot. So I'm gonna set the microphone down and I'm gonna dig. Okay, well that didn't take too long. Um, it really was not that deep, but uh, I didn't I, I didn't know how long it would take, so, you know, watching somebody dig is kind of like watching paint dry. So, anyway, it's out of the hole. I think it'll be in this scoop. Nope. Okay, it's in the scoop now. So, I'm going to put the mic down for a second and sort this target out. Still in the spoon. Still in the spoon. Still in the spoon and getting louder. Still in the spoon. I'm going to take out this rock. 
it's not the rock. Okay, still in the spoon. Up oh, in my hand now. In the spoon, up oh, I see it, it's gold. Yeah, nice little nugget. Another, another nice little nugget. Yep. And that's how digging patches up can produce decent gold. Again, uh, I think this is the end of our video, but if I uh, you get any more nuggets, I'll pull you in to, so you can see them dug. Well, I told you I'd pull you back in again if there was another one. I actually off camera dug another teensy tiny one. It was this was a real small one, so I didn't pull you back in. But I actually now have uh, four nuggets on the day: the one from in the rocks, and then three already from here. But look, I kept poking around. Always recheck your hole, right? I mean, don't consider that once you've got the nugget out, the hole is empty because I kept rechecking this hole and I pulled out uh, one more decent nugget, one tiny nugget, and now. Now I got another target in there, so I'm going to have to pull that one out. Let's see what, what happens. Okay, it's out of the hole. Okay, so that's going to be where the target is. Let's try it again. Okay. Maybe the target is here. It's in there. I can hear it faintly. Let's make sure there's not an other target again. Nope, that's the one. Yep, very faint, but I can hear it. It's probably because it's high up in the scoop and it's not really super big. In there, in the scoop. In the scoop. In the scoop. Okay, in my hand. Now there's a rock in my hand, so I'm just gonna pull that rock out. I, it's not a hot rock. And now you can hear it in the scoop plainly. Okay, again. Still in the scoop. In my hand. In my hand still. In my hand. Let's see. There's a little rock in here. I'm gonna take the rock out. Definitely not the rock. In my hand. I think it's in the scoop. Yeah, I see it. It's a little bit of gold. A uh, second little tiny nugget. Still, I've got uh, three good size, or one really good nugget, two pretty good nuggets, and two tiny nuggets. Five nuggets in a day, that ain't bad. So, I'm going to keep digging, but I don't think I'm going to bring you back for any more. I mean, there may well be a few here. Um, I might uh, film some more tomorrow if, uh, if things look good. So here is the final take. I got five nuggets in 
just about three hours of detecting. Uh, here's a picture of them, and they're all kind of on the smaller side, but the total weight was 1.8 grams, so a little more than a penny weight, which is pretty good, and I was happy for the time that I put in with the gold that I got. If you want to learn to be a successful prospector, knowledge is the key. It really is. And I wrote a book that will tell you the geology, the research, the equipment, everything you know need to know about being a successful prospector. So let me tell you a little bit more about that right now. Okay, so I wanted to tell you a little bit more about my book. Um, I wanted to be able to share the knowledge that I've gained about finding gold and, and how to be successful. And so I spent years literally writing this book, Fistful of Gold. It's more than 350 pages long, which is why I say it's an encyclopedia of everything you need to know about finding your own gold. Um, I've sold more than 8,000 copies and I've got a lot of really great feedback on it. It just is the most complete book on the market. It has information about finding gold that literally is not available in any other book that you're going to find for prospectors because I took technical stuff from geologists and other um, mineral scientists and I've translated that into language that the average guy can understand. You don't need a PhD to go out and find gold. But the information that scientists have learned over recent decades can can be of a lot of help to people. So it's in this book. Uh, if you're interested about finding gold, panning, sluicing, nugget detecting, uh, dry washing, the geology of gold deposits and how they form, it's all in here. And like I say, it's more than 350 pages long. So if you'll just go to the description underneath this video, um, you can take a look. I've got a link in there to take it to Amazon to the site where the book is sold. And I think you'll you'll really enjoy it. Take, take a look at all the people who've commented on this and have really liked the book. It has a, a very, very high rating for a book. And also, I have a, a website, my own free website that uh, you can take a look at. Um, I've got all kinds of information on here about uh, doing research and how to find gold, a lot of good information, stuff that basically uh, couldn't fit into my book. And so I put it on this website and I have a, a link also for that in the video description. So take a look in the description and you can click on the, uh, the link and it'll take you to my website. And finally, if you like this presentation, I've got a lot more coming out. Here's a three and a half ounces of gold that I found a couple of years back in one area. Um, I've got a lot more of these videos coming on gold, gemstones, hard rock, placer, a lot of metal detecting. There'll be lots of metal detecting stuff. So if you really enjoyed this, click the subscribe button and then tick the notification bell off and YouTube will let you know when I publish new stuff. And hit the like button as well. And please comment on these videos because I'm interested in what you have to say. And I promise to answer any questions you have. So if you are wondering about anything or think maybe I didn't cover something thoroughly enough in a video, then let me know and I'll be happy to try and help you out and give you whatever information you need. So thanks a lot and I um, hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you again real soon.